everybody and welcome to the Lobotomy Corporation. Okay, so this video is going to be really simple. Um, all this episode is going to be is me reading out the lore. So if you're not interested in the lore, feel free to skip this one. Um, because that is literally all we're going to be doing in this episode. We're going to start from one sin in the control team. And then we're going to go to the information team, uh, training team, safety team, into the central command team. As much as we can, at least. Um, a lot of people have been asking for it, so I figured, eh, I may as well just make a video that is all about reading out the lore. Because I know a lot of people are interested, and I have not read out any of the lore yet. So, I think it'll be important to make this video just so everybody gets a little bit of the lore. So, if you're not interested, that is perfectly fine. I'll see you in the next video, hopefully. But if you are interested, stick around. We got a lot of lore to go through, and, uh... Yeah. Quite a long episode to do it. So, I am going to be muting the music, um, while I go through the lore. I hope that's okay. Um, I would rather just read it and not have the music playing the entire time. Even though I do, I do adore the music. I think it's better if it's not playing for a video like this. So with that, um, we are going to be going through every abnormality and all their armor and their weapon. A silent abnormality that understands the conflict between good and evil. Its empty eye sockets stare at all those who encounter it. A giant skull that is attached to a cross. It wears a crown of thorns. It floats about two meters above the ground. While its appearance is bizarre, it is rare to record an incident of violence against employees involving this abnormality. It feeds on the evil that seeps out during conversations between people. The assigned employee must kneel before it, standing appears to be acceptable, and present their evil by confessing their sins to it. The way it feeds is unknown. Excerpt from Experiment Records. We have cataloged the sins a person can commit into three levels. Level one, a small lie or action that either goes unnoticed or can be shared in jest. Level 2. Sins that are more serious and only shared with the closest of friends. Level 3. Sins so profound they cannot be shared with anyone. These will be taken to the grave. Employee has been assigned to confess a level 1 sin. Energy production via the abnormality increased by 12%. Employee was assigned to confess a level 2 sin. Energy production via the abnormality was increased by 15%. We assigned employee to confess a level 3 sin. One minute and 48 seconds after the employee was sent in, a bright flash of light was seen. The light was so bright it could be seen outside of the containment unit. Immediately following the light, there was a facility-wide power outage. The phenomena lasted for two hours. Employee lost six years of their memory. Further experiments were canceled. Scientific ethics decree that all footage of those who participated in the experiment is to be kept sealed. However, the incident left us no choice but to review the footage of the containment unit. Employee redacted. This happened during redacted. About 4 uh, p.m. Anyway, there was a railroad about 20 minutes from my house. Some of my good friends and I decided to dress as forest animals. One of us chose to go as a deer. It was a crude costume. Could hardly be called one, to be honest. Just a pair of clumsily made antlers and a dark outfit with some deer-like spots on it. I don't know how our deer friend got into the woods. We didn't even notice he was missing for maybe an hour. Searched for him and finally found him in some bushes. Called out his name and I'm not sure whether it was from relief of finding us or or what. But he started sprinting towards us. And that's when we heard it. The gunshots. Bang. 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 When I came to my senses, 
I saw his blood splattered all the way to my feet. After that, not one of us dressed up as an animal ever again. That's all. By the way, is this really supposed to work? Observation log number four underscore four three five. Its eye sockets are empty. It is a skull after all, but I doubt it's blind. It certainly has its gaze fixed upon me, and I can somehow feel that it's listening to me. Confessing to it does lighten my heart, admittedly. Afterwards, we investigated the incident in the employee's hometown to get a better picture. We learned that a boy named Justin was shot and killed in a deer costume by hunters during hunting season. Unlike the employee's confession, Justin was repeatedly bullied by other kids. Witnesses said they heard the kids shout, Run, Justin, run! right before the gunshot. After the incident, the kids at the scene moved out of town, and deer hunting was banned in the area. Zayn Pentience. To know means to understand. We successfully extracted the archetype and materialized it, and the observer reshaped it into a weapon. This is why we highly regarded the act of observation. The eye sockets of the hollow skull stare into sins, and the crown of thorns casts blame. Those who are willing to spill blood for the greater good will be readily given approval for its use. Though this weapon is not as strong as other ego weapons in our possession, it provides psychological comfort to the wielder. However, it is useless to those who do not know justice. Conventional firearms were ineffective against abnormalities. Using them was as futile as cutting water with a knife. That's when we asked ourselves, if abnormalities are materialized from the unconsciousness, it may be possible to extract a piece of it back from them and turn it into a weapon. Results varied depending on the observer. The crown of thorns will sometimes protect the wielder's soul. The thorns may momentarily hurt as they anchor your soul to reality. This suit will be no better than rags to those who have no sense of guilt. The Static This abnormality is a phenomenon with no visible form. It was discovered when employees began to exhibit shared symptoms when entering a specific area of the facility. They all suffered hallucinations of a specific nature, and their mental corruption increased. After setting a radio's frequency to 1.76 megahertz we waited following 12 minutes a mysterious voice was heard through static it was difficult to make out what they were saying but it appeared to be in distress and was asking for help 17 minutes in the voice stopped and three loud explosions were heard which were then followed by two smaller explosions it could be assumed that the situation the voice was in was chaotic as based on the various levels of screaming that could be heard. 23 minutes in, all was silent. Once 25 minutes passed, the radio began to emit smoke. We thought the machine had fried, but no fault could be found. Continuing past 30 minutes, everyone in the area was suddenly filled with rage and started to exhibit the desire to assault one another with extreme aggression. Following the incident, all employees who took part refused to seek counseling. We couldn't make it mandatory as no one was injured. It is still unknown what caused the collective rage. Afterwards, unknown noises and hallucinations started to occur near the containment unit. This is a recording of the day we must never forget. It brings us to a chaotic place, forgotten by many. That must never be forgotten. Teth Noise Instead of a clear shape, its form is purely composed of an electromagnetic phenomenon. When this ego is equipped, various screams will resound along with an eerie ringing. The noises take you back to the very moment of the day that everyone had forgotten. Shy Look It's a good day. Are you still shy today? One sunny day, when they were sincerely drying the laundry in the yard, sadness struck suddenly. In our city, sacrifices for corporates must be highly praised. Honor for their deaths. No reason for you to cry, either. Rather, you should be glad. What's with that look on your face? The kind of facial expression isn't recommended in our city. 
Goodness, why are you making such a face? You're making others feel gloomy, too. Please be more considerate. You don't live in this world alone, after all. You are very poor at expressing your emotions. You must be quite shy. Hey, try to look more pleased. That way, those living in the outskirts will be more envious of us. Put a bigger smile on your face. It's not that hard. Next time, try to express yourself more clearly. It's very important to express oneself in this society. One sunny day, just like the day they sincerely dried the laundry, they dried their own skin. Everyone was finally satisfied when they showed a bright smile. If they met people who asked what was wrong, they would respond, I'm just shy, that's all. Just shy. If one tries to look at the face behind the skin, the result will not be pretty. The space behind their skin is the only personal space they have left. Leaving it uninvaded is the last bit of generosity the city can offer. Teth today's expression. Many different expressions are padded on the equipment like patches. The inability to show one's face is perhaps a form of shyness. When throbbing emotions surge up from time to time, it's best to simply cover the face. Uh, the suit has the exact same uh, description. A company of this size will always have a rumor or two floating around. I heard you could hear someone's bones breaking if you walk the hallways at night. If you try and track down that sound, you'll find a yeti who's eating one of our employees. However, we don't have an abnormality that looks anything like a yeti. Excerpt of an audio record. You should be thankful, dude. You've got a chance to get to work with the goodest boy in the world, Papa Day. Ah, uh, it's bapping me with its paws. I is this an attack? It just wants you to feed him. Don't you know that it's a trend in our company to always carry a packet of dog food or two? Well, I, I don't really like animals. <sighs> By the way, this, this little puppy is pretty beefy. Is this how dogs usually are? I guess this one's played a lot of catch, huh? We used to play fetch with him uh, pretty often just to see how cute he was running after the ball. Though, we stopped for some reason. Hey, did, did you see the face it made when I fed it? It was super creepy, I, I swear. It's just your imagination, man. He's always like our little angel. Isn't that wide? Who's a good boy? Jeez, do, does this thing have some kind of power to... Mentally manipulate people? No idea what you're on about, Jacob. Do you want a widow buddy? Widow cutie pie? Do you? Do you? Did you wait for me, Papa Day Boy? Ah, uh, hey, it's eating something. Aren't we supposed to be the first per people in its unit today? My widow goody good good boy was just hungry, uh-huh, uh-huh. Man, he's just so cute. Look at how he's nomming on that. What is it chewing on? Ah, uh, I knew it. That's James's finger, man. He went missing during the patrol last, last shift. Can't you see the nail? Remember bragging about having heart, uh, having a heart painted on his nails? I told you, dude, that thing's up to no good. I can't believe this, who? This abnormality is a killer. I get that you're shocked, but I told you a bunch of times that there's no way a cute pet in this place would be harmless. Man, I, I'm so glad you finally came to your sin. Who, who wouldn't feed him on time? Poor little guy's been starving all night. It's, it's so heartbreaking. Ah, uh, well, uh, I, I think we're supposed to suppress it. How could you even suggest doing something so heartless to a cute little good boy like this? Just look at his eyes. How could an innocent animal do anything wrong? Isn't that why you good little goody boy? The abnormality shows no reaction. Only the sound of a bone being gnawed on is audible. Ah, uh, dude, your little angel is gnawing on our colleague's finger. What are you, a newbie? Don't you know everything cute is forgiven here? I've never heard that, and I seriously don't think it's true. We've got to tranquilize it, and if you won't, then I'll do it by myself. The sound of a tranquilizer shot being fired can be heard. 
No! The abnormality begins to whimper. The recording cuts off after a bit of shouting. Following the evidence I provided in the recording, I request that Jacob be immediately demoted for firing such a thing at Papa Day. A terrible, evil animal abuser has no place working in our company. Our goodest boy in the world, Papa Day, has been traumatized, traumatized by this incident. He'll only eat five kilograms of his favorite snack now. To help him cope with the trauma, I suggest we request a new snack for Papa Day. Premium grade salmon, rich with vitamin B. I'll be waiting for your reply. Reply. Your requests have been accepted. P.S. In your next message, please be sure you attach five different photos of the goodest boy in the world, Papa Day. Thank you in advance. Teth, so cute. One may think, how can a weapon drawn from such a cute abnormality be any good? However, the claws are actually quite durable and sharp. Beware that the beast inside you may, awa may awaken if you use this weapon too much. Oh, but the soft jelly-like pobs feel very nice to touch. And the armor has the exact same description. Opened can of well cheers. Employees records. Source unknown. Hey, have you guys ever been to one of those lobotomy meetups? Mind you, it took a lot of courage for me to bring this up again. You see, there's a bunch of clubs in this company where employees gather up. I once attended some kind of ping pong group event thing, but there weren't any girls there. So I pulled out real quick, lol. So like, one day I saw this announcement for some weird get together on, on the corp message board. I got interested. So I called up the group leader and he introduced himself as from safety. I asked if there were any girls in the group and he told me there were a ton of female employees. Now that got me super interested right away. So I signed up right away for the upcoming meeting. After, so I showed up, got a name tag like everyone else. I don't remember everything, but I think I saw like three people from training and two from information. And about maybe half an hour later, the leaders brought in dozens of cans of whale cheers on a tray and gave me and and gave one to each of us. I should have realized something was wrong, because the can was already opened. But I'm a sucker for soda. And I gulped the darn thing down my throat the moment he passed it. Me a can, Lamau. Now after that, the leader told us it's time to move. And he said he got a van rented for us. We all thought he was an awesome guy for that. I hopped in the van with two employees uh, from the Horde and one guy from the same department as me. Leader said it was going to take about an hour, an hour drive, so we could nap if we wanted. So we did. Weird thing was, though, I went to sleep real fast. Like, real fast. Like, the moment I shut my eyes, I was out like a light. I have insomnia, but for whatever reason, I fell asleep so fast then. Uh, that was my big mistake. Anyways, I was sound asleep, but then I heard seagulls. Like, WTF? Seagulls? Yeah, at first I thought it was someone's phone alarm, but then I heard the waves crashing. I was like, man, this is too real to be a phone alarm. So I opened my eyes to find myself lying on a deck. It was a boat, Lefmau. An actual real-life boat. I knew I was screwed the moment I saw shrimp hopping around. Sent chills down my spine. I wanted to believe it was all a dream, but I swear that shrimp's realistic flopping was a sobering sight. The realization crushed me like a hammer, and I was surrounded by people who looked like they were the crew. They were all beefed up. It felt like they'd put me back to sleep with force if I said something wrong. One slip, and I'd be swimming with the sharks. The crew was around 10 people, including the captain, boatswain, cook, and all that. They all chuckled at me while I was spacing out, imagining them killing me. The guy who looked like the captain walked towards me and asked me about my height and weight. I asked him when the ship goes to port. He told me it'd be about a month, and I shouldn't try to run away or anything because they'd already made a deal with my people. 
I have no idea who my people were, but I was too scared to ask. Then the other crew members called me over for lunch. They were making instant ramen, putting shrimp, crabs, clams, and all other sorts of stuff in it. They told me to stop acting like I was about to jump into the sea and to try the ramen. I said no at first. They laughed at me again, saying there weren't any sleeping pills or stuff like that in it, and gave me some anyway. Well, a man's got to live, so I ate it. Tasted better than I expected it to. As soon as we finished lunch... They told me we were going to... They told me they were going to teach me how to adjust the ropes. I pretty much gave up at that point, so I simply answered, Sure. All I could see anyways was these little islands that no one would have a chance of surviving on. For a month, I learned how to pull up fish traps, fill bait boxes, repair fishing nets, cook, cook some ramen, which is a very difficult skill, get coffee, and all sorts of stuff. I kept getting better, and I got to the point where I could prepare mackerel sashimi and fish stew for the crew. That rhymes. Everyone complimented it. Said I could open a restaurant with that stew. Later on, we went through a couple of typhoons. Them and I started forming some kind of bond. A companionship. Whales were becoming a common sight at that point. Two weeks in, the captain told me I was pretty good. And asked me if I was interested in, join in officially joining the crew. When I thought about it, I would have been fired from the corp anyway. So this seemed like a legitimate opportunity to make a living. This was the first time I ever got a compliment, after all. What am I doing now? Well, I've been promoted, and now I'm living fine. I found true happiness in cracking open a cold one after a hard day's work, covered in seawater and sweat. I'm at the port now, but we gotta take off soon to catch some more shrimp. Never know what your future holds, bros. Sometimes I think about those other folk who were at the meetup that day. Not that I really want to snoop around to find out, though. I just try to keep a positive mind. I want to say they're hopefully doing good, just like me. Oh, it's time to sail out. See you guys. I was absolutely losing that voice the longer that went on. All right. Zayn, soda. A suit of armor that feels like you're wearing aluminum. It's quite light for armor, so it's rather comfortable to wear. Some say it smells of sea salt when worn for a long time. Some people think that's called sweat. This ego was last extracted by an employee who particularly loved shrimp, a pistol painted in a refreshing purple. Whenever this ego is used, a faint scent of grapes wafts through the air. Grave of Cherry Blossoms A tree that stands in the middle of the containment unit. It never withers even if it's not given any form of nutrition. Some employees take time to rest near this tree. Employees sometimes enter its containment unit for le for leisure. Hey, Xavier. Did you see that new abnormality? I think you got put in charge of it. Yeah, I saw it, all right. Just some trees with buds along its branches. I don't think they'll be able to blossom without sunlight. Did you start making observations and writing reports yet? Nah. I think I'll get to it soon enough, though. All righty. Take care. Long time no see. How's it going lately? Yo, get this. You know that abnormality we talked about before? I don't think it's hostile. And guess what? It started blooming. It's so surreal looking at him. I felt like spring had come for the first time in this place. Is that okay? Usually any sort of change is a bad omen for something catastrophic here. Don't worry. It's just some harmless flowers. Thanks for worrying about me, though. Bonjour again. How's work been going for you? Golly, the flowers just keep blooming. I think it'll fill up the whole unit at this rate. You should see it for yourself. It's really beautiful. I don't think I'd ever get sick of looking at it. I'd love to, man, but I can't. I've been so busy lately. <clears throat> really? Dang, what a shame. It's absolutely magnificent. I I'm telling you. Hmm. You doing all right, by the way? You been making a lot of mistakes lately these days. It seems like you've been spacing out a ton, too. Don't worry, it's nothing. 
I gotta head back now. Oh, and I, I've been making a sketch of the tree, actually. I'll let you be the first person to see it when I'm done. Audio recording of a counseling session. Yeah, I've been better recently. I got better at managing abnormalities, too. Going to Grave of Cherry Blossom's chamber makes me feel weirdly amazing, like you said. I never believed that mumbo-jumbo about Flora giving out a good aura or whatever. But I guess it was true. It's such a shame I can't see those cherry blossoms with Xavier. I got to see his work in progress sketch when I was rummaging through his stuff one time. The actual tree was much more beautiful, more magnificent than ever, anything he'd ever describe it as. It's such a tragedy he went missing before seeing how it is now. If you find any abnormalities suspicious, please be sure you look into them, all right? Yup, I'm fine now. I shook off that feeling. The cherry blossoms all fell after I saw it that time. Yet, I saw bode. I saw buds poking out of the branches again. Would it be alright if I oversaw the abnormality from now on? No, nah, it's no big deal. I just want to see those flowers in full bloom again. Yes, thank you. Notice of advice. We've received reports about an alarming increase in the number of employees who want to view Grave of Cherry Blossom's containment. This fervent rush of request is likely due to the absence of natural scenery in our facility. However, I don't think there is any need to make a rule against it. We found that our staff's mental contamination in dices decreased when looking at the cherry blossom. The reason behind this is unimportant. It could be Flora giving out a good aura for all anyone cares. The only thing that's certain is that the cherry blossom captivates our employees, and they don't know what lies beneath its roots. Did you realize that the cherry blossoms are strikingly crimson? And its unmatched beauty is caused by its color? The more blood it has, the more... Beautiful it is. Our employees who are oblivious to it are drawn to it again and again. Just keep everything hush-hush for now. It's how things work in this place. Teth Cherry Blossoms Petals scatter from the fan like afterimages, longing for the view of the flowers that withered away as soon as they bloomed. The spring breeze clad in cherry blossom petals is still cold and painful. Do not miss me, for I shall return as buds when winter leave. This ego, fit for a flower viewing, makes the hearts of those who look at it flutter like a spring day. When the cherry trees are in full bloom, let us take a rest from life by watching those petals scatter. Sitting under the tree's shadow makes you feel like these gloomy days will flutter away like the petals of a flower. Rodolta of the Sleigh an old card attached to the abnormality. Merry Christmas! Santa rushes along the night sky to deliver presents to happy kids who don't cry. Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer shines his nose so bright through the fog, while tugging along a sleigh full of presents, guiding it along tonight. Every happy kid around the world deserves a present. From afar, the abnormality resembles Santa Claus atop his sleigh, but upon closer inspection, it is, a com it is completely different from its description in common folklore. Contrary to the titular character Rudolph, the sleigh drags the, the reindeer along. We've observed the three different portions of the abnormality separately. Rudolph an organic entity in colors of green, red, and white that appears to be a horse or deer. Its muscles do not seem to move, but many of our staff report movement in the eyes. Some even say that they made eye contact with it. There's a 30 centimeter diameter hole in its abdomen. Armed employees later reported that the hole was empty. Santa, a mysterious and transparent organic entity on top of Rudolph. It is full of what seems to be human organs, all of which function normally. 
the sleigh. The size is similar to that of a child's. The plating looks like organic skin, and there are white runners attached to the bottom. The accessories of the sleigh are replaced with stiff, severed hands. Unknown objects are carefully wrapped in gifts. Many employees tried to open these gifts, but failed. Rumor has it they can only be opened on Christmas Day. These three elements are crudely sewn together. Doctor suggested that all three parts may be made from a single body. Whoever made this thing must have had a great hatred for Christmas. Well, that, or they've never seen Santa Claus. H.E. Christmas. It is patched with heavy leather of unknown origin. The colorful leather pieces remind one of a festive holiday that is now long forgotten. The stitches are carefully woven, but for whom, or for what exactly, is unclear. It is not elegant, but you can feel the devotion of its creator. What is truly underneath the leather is classified, but that secrecy only makes the weapon all the more powerful. The colorful leather pieces remind one of a festive holiday long forgotten. The origin of the material cannot be disclosed to unauthorized personnel. Does it still keep the dream of being a nice kid deserving of gifts? The wielder may feel an urge to give out gifts to random people. The lady facing the wall. An abnormality in the shape of a woman against the wall. Over time, her unbearable sorrow grew into mournful obsession covered in countless lengthy hairs. As she is always facing the wall, not a single person has seen her face. While she occasionally talks to herself and weeps quietly, it is impossible to have a meaningful conversation with her. Despite her human appearance, it is impossible to discern what she is really looking at or her true intentions. She will attempt to talk to or pique the interests of those who are about to leave her containment unit. However, one should never look back in response, as it may cause mental damage. Certain rumors insist that one may turn to stone upon looking back, but this is clearly not true. Excerpt from Observation Log I-304 There's only one important rule to follow. Ignore her. She always tries to draw our attention. She mutters incoherently in an attempt to have those in the room pay closer attention to what she's saying. She'll even plead or whisper maliciously when someone is about to leave in the hopes that they may instinctively look back. The subconscious is a threat to your own health in her presence. It is important to have your guard up and to be aware of what is occurring when you are in the room with her. If you forget the warnings for even a second and let your guard down, you may find yourself looking back towards here. I have another warning to leave to all those who read this. Do not let this insidious abnormality learn your name. If she learns your name, she may use it to trick you into turning around. No matter what you hear, or what she may do to tempt you while you are in the room with her, do not, and I repeat, do not, under any circumstance, look at her. Curiosity is a luxury, and you must never indulge when you are in her containment unit. Excerpt from Counseling Log, number 9-39. Employee... Employee... Fi, F-50004. Redacted. This colleague of mine, whom I care deeply... Well, I care for all my co-workers, but it was different. The amount of passion they poured into their work was something I have rarely witnessed in life. Anyway, I have no idea how she, that abnormality, learned this is his name. Maybe someone called it out to them while they were inside the containment unit and she heard it. We should have sent two in for work with her. The common procedure was to have a team of two sent into the containment unit, but as you know... We're always short-handed. Besides, that abnormality was low on the threat scale. If we followed the procedure and sent two inside, the powers would not have been happy about it. Well, you know the rest. The day the incident happened was sent to the containment unit as possible. 
but they didn't come out for a long time. I know was a prompt and diligent worker, so I headed straight for the containment unit, fearing the worst. Thankfully, I found them without even a scratch. But the kid looked out of it, like, way out of it. Next day, the kid was resigned. I heard they sent him to an asylum. No one ever saw again. The kid just kept staring at the wall, murmuring and not responding to anyone. It was the very last time I saw no one knows what happened inside the containment unit. You won't find it out from the kid, either. H.E. Screaming Wedge Hair has grown on the crossbow as if to express that the woman's dejection will never be forgotten. The sound of the projectile splitting through the air is reminiscent of her piercing scream. Those who wield this must be careful, as her hair can tangle the wielder's hands and drag them into an endless path of sorrow. Only iron-willed employees with a cold-blooded disposition can use this without letting the deep-rooted sorrow weave its strands around their heart. Her resentment is tightly bound to it as if to express that it is not to be cast away so easily. When the projectile pierces the heart of an enemy, it will be forever tangled in the knot of dejection. A warm heart and cool head are required to resist the deep-rooted sorrow. The worst named abnormality I've encountered yet. Nameless fetus. <laughs> it takes the form of an unborn fetus. Its skin is covered in a mucus. Sticky liquid. Small veins can be seen here and there. Yeah, the abnormality's abnormally bulged eyes are usually closed. It always seems unsatisfied. But what exactly it needs is undetermined. It has a great obsession with being fed. And if it is not fed regularly, its stress levels rise drastically. Once it reaches a certain level of stress, it cries out loudly in a way that mentally harms all those who may be around it. Excerpt from Interview Log, number 2-49. Employee F2706. I've never seen it smile. It always seems to want something, but we can never fulfill its desire. I guess that's the reason its cries are destructive. Because it's always unsatisfied needs are so strong. When I was a newbie here, none of my colleagues would tell me exactly why we fed it. I thought it was some weird milk or something. Like what other normal babies would eat up. It is a baby, underneath all that grossness. But that wasn't the case. It only eats human flesh. Can you believe it? Stop it crying. We have to hold a drawing every so often. Do you know what that means? Excerpt from a terminated observation log. When I first heard about the nameless fetus... No. When I first heard that the nameless fetus had to be fed, I thought we'd have to give it food with, like, a spoon or something. It looked too weak to do anything, and its mouth isn't fully developed either. Later I found out that it ate meat. I thought it... It'd have to be chewed up by someone first so it'd be soft enough to eat. When I asked my working buddy about it, he said, he laughed and said, no way, that's ridiculous. We just need to leave the food in, a, in the unit and go. I still thought about how, in the world, that fetus could eat stuff. I wondered if we served it some kind of succulent meat that's not even available to us in the cafeteria. Out of curiosity, I decided to sneak a peek at the feeding process of the nameless fetus. Only level three and up employees are assigned to that process, but I was able to attend it because I made up the excuse I was covering for someone. As I nervously watched, wondering if my lie would be worth it, some people came along with large plastic bags. Does it eat that much? And when they opened the bags, I could only gape in horror. They were human corpses and the baby ate it. How? I don't even want to imagine it. It had a large scar on its stomach. I really thought it was some kind of scar, like a large flower. Its stomach would open, dripping with slimy liquid. It was the greediest creature in the world. That day onward, I was a vegetarian. Excerpt from an employee's diary, not to be confused with the diary in the comments. Hope it's okay. Um, voice is starting to feel it, so Polly is going to be a dude. I hope that's okay. I'm Polly. I've worked for Lobotomy for about a month now. 
My parents are really proud of me for getting into a wing like this, and all, all my friends are jealous. I still make a lot of mistakes, but someday, I'll be as capable as my co-workers. There's a special employees-only event held by our company. No one knows when or why this event is held. Even my co-worker who's been here for five years doesn't seem to know. When the event starts, a giant roulette begins to spin. Everyone stops what they're doing to stare at the roulette and see who will be the lucky winner. With desperate looks on their faces. The name of every single employee is written on that roulette. Whoever ends up being selected, they're extremely lucky. They'll be promoted and transferred to another branch of the company. Headquarters. In addition, their family will be gifted with an unimaginable fortune. At the headquarters, you don't have to worry about being attacked by abnormalities or, or need to bid farewell to your dead colleagues. My senior really hopes that they'll get picked eventually. You see, their father got into an accident one day, and it takes a lot of, a lot of money to keep him alive and well. I really hope the roulette picks someday. When my senior's name showed up on the roulette, I congratulated them with all my heart. Though, they didn't seem too happy for some reason. Others gave them a hug. One by one, everyone was crying for some reason. They, say, they said goodbye to me, shedding tears while trying to force a smile. I, I haven't seen them since. I'm sure they're working under much better conditions with a really nice salary. When I try to bring them up in conversation, people stop talking as if I've spoken some sort of taboo. I still remember the last thing they said to me before they left. One day you'll understand the meaning of the desperation on their faces when the roulette spins. The manager holds a specific right to call a special event for all the employees in the facility without any cause for occasion. When the event starts, a giant roulette will spin and select one lucky employee's name. That employee will be promoted, transferred to a different branch, and their family will receive a yearly pension. No personnel are allowed to invade the manager's right to hold the event. The following information is forbidden to the public eye. Conditions required to hold the event. Restricted. Restricted. The crying of nameless fetus has reached its peak. The roulette will select an employee that satisfies one of the conditions below. Questions the true purpose of the company. 2. Conducts or plans unauthorized experiments with the abnormalities. 3. Maintains an excessive curiosity about the abnormalities and conducts or plans unauthorized observation on them. 4. Is incapable of working due to physical or psychological trauma. Unauthorized signifies that it is unauthorized by the corporation or Angela. The following actions will be taken with the employee selected by the roulette. Expunging all records the company has about the employee. Sacrificing the employee to the abnormality. Informing the employee's family that they have been transferred to another branch. H.E. Cyrinx. What cry could be more powerful than one spurred by primal instinct? As if everything else were hollow and pointless, the wailing numbs even the brain, making it impossible to think. And then the armor has the exact same description. It takes the form of a girl burnt to ashes. Even though there's nothing left to burn, the fire still doesn't extinguish. A matchstick impales the girl's body like a stake. Usually, the match is always lit. While the abnormality shows no signs of activity because of this, employees often speculate that the matchstick may be the abnormality's true body. However, recently, the ashen figure was seen crying according to witnesses. Ex excerpt from Abnormality Specialist Doctor Research Log. The charred body represents the child's crumbled hope, while the ever-blazing flame represents the obsession for affection. It, it's always in conflict while the, with the contradiction between these two. We paid a boatload 
And that's all they have to say? Excerpt from recorded staff conversation. Well, she's like a ticking time bomb. No one can tell if she's in a good mood or not. We just have to hope we won't be the one blown up before entering the containment unit. She won't get any better. We can only try and keep her from getting worse. Excerpt from counseling log. I never thought the abnormality would be able to escape. Maybe we were getting careless. But it seemed that all it could do was burn up the match stuck to its body. Yes, our response was a little late. Most abnormalities that try to escape would attack the employees in front of them, but this one didn't show any aggression towards the nearby employees. Instead, it headed to a different department, the most crowded place in the company. If we didn't suppress it at the door, half of the people here wouldn't be in one piece. Teth, fourth match flame. The archetype was already charred from the moment of extraction. Although the exterior scorched, there is no adverse effect on the ego's performance. The ashy design reminds one of the hatred against all the merry things in the world and the desire to burn it all. However, no one knows whether it is actually fireproof, as the design suggests. The fire roars and burns like the first flame. The light of the match will not go out until it has burned away happiness, warmth, and light. And all the other good things in the world. There's no need to worry about it being quenched. The experiments with lighting the matches could not be completed without collateral damage. Those who are burned will feel infinite hatred towards the world until the last flicker of their consciousness is snuffed out. The Funeral of the Dead Butterflies Where does one go when they die? Where did all the employees who worked here go? They must have returned home, to a haven where family and warmth await. The employees cannot leave. Once they join the company, the only way to leave is to resign. Then those resigned employees must have returned home, having earned what they wanted and being full of hope. We are the feathers of a wing. Resignation isn't as simple as you think, just like how a feather doesn't detach from a wing on its own will. Then where did all the resigned employees go? They're bound to the company the moment they enter. Even if they do resign, they are doomed to stay here forever. Long ago, in some world, people believed that they would become beautiful beings with small wings when they died. It's a silly story. Nonsensical, too. If we get wings, will we, will we be able to leave this place? Do we get our wings only after we retire? They, they say the more... The mourner, with a huge luggage on his back, had come to be a savior to all. Eventually, he himself was trapped in this place. And now he wanders the company with only the memory of an empty faith. He's carrying a coffin. A large coffin to pay tribute to the employees who have nowhere else to go. However, it is still too small to comfort those innocent sacrifices. Inside, inside it is a kaleidoscope of butterflies waiting for the moment to fall asleep. Until then, they fluttered their wings uselessly, the wings that may have been jumbled into one or split into many. Butterflies are supposed to pollinate flowers, but not a single proper flower blooms in this place. There is no choice but to wait. After all, there must be an end to every world. Solemn Lament The somber design is a reminder that n that not a sil that not a sliver of frivolity is allowed for the minds of those who mourn. One handgun symbolizes grief for the dead, while the other symbolizes early lament for the living. The Undertaker's outfit belongs to those who pay tribute to the dead. Only a solemn mind is required to express condolences. There is no need for showy accessories. If you see a mound standing out in the middle of the desert, please do not desecrate it. It is the grave of the countless butterflies that have died in this place. Snow Queen! A queen lives alone in the frosty winter forest. Like how every story starts, Kai was a child with a kind heart. When the shards of a mirror made by an evil fairy were scattered on everyone's heart, Kai began to see things he didn't want to see, or need to see. He left the village he grew up in. In, in an unforgiving blizzard, Kai met the Snow Queen. 
He became curious of the world beyond his knowledge. He felt as though everything he knew amounted to so little. The snow palace he reached was so cold. But the snow queen's kiss froze his heart, and he couldn't feel the cold anymore. There was no joy in the palace, only the long winter night. Gerda was strong enough to remain unpierced by the mirror, and brave enough to go on a journey to rescue Kai. So she set off towards the snow palace. The journey was agonizing. Gerda was hurt and pained. Sometimes she cried. However, eventually, Gerda met Kai. Spring arrived with blossoming roses. Its warmth melted the Snow Queen's palace, and the piece of mirror in Kai's heart evaporated without a trace. Then, left all alone, the Snow Queen... I remember the day we put her in the cryo coffin with our own hands. At some point, her joyous laughter was gone. She just cycled through laughing and crying. And eventually, she was found in a bathtub soaked in red with her wrist cut. We did not believe in death. I will have her reconstructed from the machines I have detested for my entire life, but have become the only answer. She would have been disgusted by me for this, dying in that bathtub. However... We were too far down the road, filled with remorse and regret, to feel any sort of guilt. One day, it spoke to me. I remember you. You were a kind-hearted person. The moment I heard it, I was seized by the urge to destroy what I had created with my own hands. H.E. Frost Splinter. The Snow Queen was beautiful, but where her heart should have been was empty and frozen. The edge of the spear is both straight and icy. Anyone damaged by it will lose themselves for a, moment, for a moment. As the equipment was forged from snow, it shall disappear without a trace someday. Someday. When the weather warms enough to melt the snow, it may thaw the heart as well. If you truly believe so. To stay inside the snow palace, a warm cloak is a must. As the cloak is forged from snow, it shall disappear without a trace someday. Child of the Galaxy. I can't tell if this is a boy or girl, but I'm leaning more towards girl because of the... the shirt. It was a night veiled in gentle mist. A barefooted child was looking at me. He was crying. Alright, it's a guy. His dreamy eyes filled with sorrow. The sadness hanging on his face stopped me in my track. He said he lost something precious, and when I offered to help, he gave me a big smile. A teardrop fell from the child's dewy eyes as stars showered from the sky. The world falls into a slumber, trapped in an ecstatic lullaby. That night, the galaxy descended with bare feet. Excerpt from the diary of an employee who committed suicide. It takes the form of a young boy with big eyes and skin that resembles the night sky. The child shows great enjoyment with talking and playing with others. He has a strong attachment to the act of making contact with another. If the child and an employee reach a certain level of intimacy, he will give a small pebble to the employees he now considers his friend. The employees will feel happiness and vigor while in possession of the pebble. However, this pebble will do more than just good if the employee happens to enter any containment unit other than his. If an employee in possession in possession of one of the child's pebbles, the song of their strained friendship, dies, he will show deep grief and sorrow for their loss. Excerpt from Employee's Diary. I looked into the child's eyes for a while. I may have spaced out a little bit because his eyes were so dreamy. I wanted to pet him, but I remembered my co-workers telling me not to have personal feelings towards abnormalities. I told him my name. He repeated it with wide eyes as if he'd just found out some big secret. Each time he called my name, it felt like it became something more than just a familiar thing I had been living with. When another employee entered the child's containment unit, he did not follow that employee and looked for me instead. I felt basely triumphant after hearing about that. The kid follows me, not you. The moment I entered the child's room, he jumped into my arms crying. When I finally set him down, he shed a tear that became a small white pebble that fell into my hand. Please don't lose it, and don't give it to anyone else, the boy mumbled. Do you like it? Do you like it more than me? The boy 
quietly asked when I arrived after finishing working with another abnormality. I asked how he knew what I was doing, and he answered lightly. Isn't it obvious? I know everything. Whatever you do, wherever you go. His gaze lay on the pebble. Then he smiled. His eyes gave me goosebumps. I tried to get rid of the pebble. But I realized it was beyond my control. I don't get what I'm talking about right now, but... You still treasure it, right? The child smiles at me. Smiles. 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 I can't get this pebble off me. My only hope is to wait for the child to tire of me. I'm waiting for that day, but will it ever come? People tell me I'm an excellent employee. Idiots. They don't know a thing. Shut up. I can't take it anymore. I can't escape him. I thought... I thought I was in charge. But the truth is, I was just a pebble in his hands the whole time. Whatever I do, wherever I go, I hear his whispers. I have to end it. But I'm not sure if I can. I came from afar. I'm so glad to meet you. Become a pebble. And let's walk the galaxy together. I hear his whispers and breath. Pitch black darkness follows. Just like the night I met him. We don't have his weapon, but we do have the suit. H.E. Our Galaxy. The pebble dropped into your hand sparkles, sways, tickles, and eventually becomes the universe. There's a universe inside a pebble. When the child cries, the stars in the galaxy light the void. In you, in your universe, am I to be found? Gstandenfreud. I don't know if I pronounced that exactly correctly, but it, it seems, that seems right. A mechanical abnormality capable of walking on its own. My voice is killing me, so I'm glad this is the last one. Someone's persistent gaze can be felt from the keyhole inside the machine. It blinks, but never closes. The purpose of the eye, or what it's observing, is unknown. After several experiments, it has been discovered when one or more employees stare at the abnormality, the condition becomes far worse. An employee was sent in after covering their eyes with a thick cloth. The cloth must be made from a fine, opaque material. Tests must be conducted to ensure the cloth completely blocks their vision. After entering the abnormality's containment unit, they face the direction of the abnormality for 10 seconds. No reaction. Experiment D-003. Similar to the previous experiment, an employee was sent in with their eyes covered. The cloth was identical to the one used in D-002, but allowed the employees to discern some forms. After entering the containment unit of the abnormality, they face towards the abnormality for 10 seconds. After 5 seconds, it aggressively approached the employee. Experiment halted. This time, a blind employee was sent in without any covering. The employees... The employee faced the abnormality for more than 30 seconds. There was no reaction. Please dispose of the subject used in this test immediately. When training employees who have never worked with this abnormality before, it goes without saying, but please make sure to tell them not to look at the abnormality directly. If someone raises doubts about this, tell them what happened to the employee Yumi, who did not follow instructions and stared directly at the abnormality. Memo 2. Employee Yumi can no longer be in charge of this abnormality. She claims that she is under constant surveillance, but that is, but this is a preposterous accusation, and we must believe that she has a severe delusional disorder. Most of what she says is nonsense, but to put it simply, she claims that someone keeps watching her, whether she's eating or going to the restroom. Also, Whenever she sees something like a keyhole or a crack between a door, she will become hysterical and try to seal any hole that she sees. However, what's more aggravating is that her mental corruption levels read normal, which makes it difficult for us to dispose of her by the system. Please replace her soon. Memo 3. The request we made be... Oh. The request we made before was resolved. Employee Yumi was found in a room. She covered all the holes in a room with duct tape including the vent. She even stabbed her eyes out with a pen. The delusional disorder seems to have been resolved as well. She's not muttering nonsense anymore, however. I have to wonder why you would want to send a blind employee into the containment unit again. I don't know what experiment D-004 is about, but I don't, I don't think it will do much good. H.E. Gaze. The gaze from the keyhole is fixed on its target without ever stopping. No one knows what it, what it wanted to peep at so dearly. As long as this is equipped, 
ambush won't be a concern. And the weapon has the exact same description. So, <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed that. I went through every possible character that I currently have. Um, and we read all of their weapons other than Star Child's weapon. We read all of their armors. And we went through each and every one of their backstories. So, let me know what you guys thought of this one. My voice is freaking killing me after talking for an hour straight. But that is perfectly fine. So let me know what you guys thought of this one. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.